Nancy Cavey, National ERISA and Individual Disability Attorney. Welcome to Winning Isn't Easy. Before we get started, I've got to give you a legal disclaimer. This podcast is not legal advice. The Florida Bar Association says I have to say this. Now that I've said it, nothing will prevent me from giving you an easy to understand overview of the disability insurance world, the games that disability carriers play, and what you need to know to get the disability benefits you deserve. So off we go. Now today I'm going to be talking about the interactions between you, your doctor, and the carrier in your ERISA disability claim. As you may know, disability carriers often require that policyholders receive reasonable and appropriate medical care. But did you know that your doctor also has an important role to play in your claim? They should be completing forms called attending physician statement forms. I'm going to cover what those forms are and what can happen when your doctors don't or won't cooperate with you to help you get the disability benefits you deserve. I'm going to be speaking specifically about six things. First, I'm going to talk about the secrets that you have to know about how to talk with your doctor about your symptoms and your functionality in your ERISA disability claim. Second, I'm going to talk about the six things that should be in your medical records or should be addressed that can make or break your ERISA disability claim. Thirdly, I'm going to talk about what you should do if the doctor doesn't know what the definition of disability is for ERISA disability purposes and won't complete an attending physician statement form. Fourth, I'm going to talk about why an ERISA disability carrier doctor opinion can make or break your claim. Fifth, I'm going to talk about whether you should let the disability carrier plan speak with your doctor. And lastly, I'm going to talk about should you or your lawyer hire your own consultative doctor or undergo your own independent medical evaluation in your ERISA disability claim. Let's take a break before we get started. Welcome back to Winning Isn't Easy. Ready to get started? Let's talk about the secrets that you need to know about how you want to talk with your doctor about your symptoms and functionality in your ERISA disability insurance claim. Do you have teenagers? Well, I had teenagers. And when they would come home, I would say to them, well, how did your day go? And most teenagers, including mine, would always reply that they were having an okay day or that everything was just fine. Of course, that wasn't always the case, and it's probably not the case when you see your doctor. It's this casual exchange with your doctor that can destroy your ERISA disability claim. Now, unfortunately, when you see the doctor and the doctor asks you, how are you doing? You're probably going to answer like your teenager answered, and that is, oh, I'm, I'm okay, or I'm just fine, when in fact, that's really not the case. You think you're making casual conversation when, in fact, your doctor's recording that you're doing okay or that you're doing fine. That can destroy your claim because the disability carrier is going to seize on those comments. They're going to interpret those comments to mean that your medical condition isn't severe, that you don't have any medical impairments, that you can work in your own occupation or any occupation. So how should you be talking to your doctor? Well, let's talk about those secrets. first. And foremost, let's skip this casual exchange with your doctor. Tell your doctor about your symptoms from head to toe and how your symptoms impact your ability to do simple things at work or at home. Now, I have my clients complete what I call a symptoms and functionality worksheet that we ultimately give to the doctor um, at each visit that will memorialize symptoms and functionality. Of course, I ask them to keep a copy for their own records. I want you to remember that you are not Superman or Superwoman. So you're not even John Wayne or other action actors. Um, you don't need to present yourself as a strong man or a strong woman. Uh, you have to be truthful about your problems. I want you also to make sure that your doctor understands your occupational duties because you've ensured your occupation and not a job. And I want you to make sure that you are explaining to the doctor, here's my occupational duties. Here are the problems that I'm having. Here are the symptoms uh, that I'm having that impact my ability to do these occupational duties. It's this history that you're giving, not that I'm fine or okay, that is really important to getting your benefits. Now, 
What you also want to do is make sure that any restrictions and limitations your doctor assigns are noted in your medical records, or alternatively, that they're completing these forms called attending physician statement forms. Now, you may have noticed, by the way, that the forms don't ask the right question, and I'll talk about that a little later. Additionally, uh, when you're talking about symptoms and functionality, you also want to address any medication problems that you're having. You might be having side effects. So you want to talk to the doctor about those side effects and make sure that those side effects are noted in your medical records. If the doctor's changing your medication, you want to make sure that that medication change is documented also. The key here is to have your medical records tell your story of your disability and why you can't perform the material and substantial duties of your own occupation or any occupation. It's the history of your symptoms and functionality that will win the day. Please don't let your medical records destroy your claim because you don't know how to talk to your doctor. Let's take a break. <laughs> 